Hey, what's up? It's John Schnapp here, and you were just listening to that Heroes theme song. It's coming at you on iTunes. Probably never, but I like hearing it. <laughs> we're It's episode 53 of Collider Heroes. I'm here with the regular group. What's up, everybody? We got Robert Meyer Burnett over in there. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see everybody and Future Girl, as oh. always. Yes. Yes. Amy? Yes. Speaking of Hello. Future Girl, Amy Dallin. Hi, good to be back. And John Campia, ready to see Captain America Civil War for his second time tonight. tonight. And today we cannot wait to talk about Captain America Civil War. We're going to give you all the details. We're going to tell you every last thing about how <laughs> Spider-Man dies in the second act. No spoilers! Oh, wait! wait. Actually, we are not going to do any spoilers. Well, me and John are going to talk about it in very vague terms. Uh, and we Rob both, and I are going to stare jealously yeah, from the like sidelines. No one gave us an invite. Hey, look, What's up with that? Well, you guys are going to see it very soon. We're, gonna, we're working on it. And, I mean, I pre-ordered some more side, hot toys, you? and I don't even get to go to the. Did I mention I'm seeing it again tonight? Oh. John can't be must be silent at this time because he's seeing it a second time. So even though I've already seen it, I'm seething in jealous hatred. I'm not actually. I'm really happy we got to see it. Let's talk about Captain America: Civil War was screened a full month in advance of its release on May 6th. Uh, so with over a month to go before Captain America drops, Marvel screened the entire film for critics an entire month early. Extremely confident it is it, basically an exaggeration because they have nothing to worry about because this movie simply rocks. Following the increasing collateral damage from the past few Marvel films, the Avengers are now being pressed by the entire world to submit to some form of monitoring. Some are for it, some are against it, and ultimately this along with siding or uh, for or against the, the Winter Soldier breaks out into an all-out war. All of this with the introduction of the character Black Panther and for the first time the official Marvel version of Spider-Man. Nailed it. That's all I could say. Let's briefly talk about Civil War. John, your thoughts about Civil War? Yeah, it's, it's, it, we're, we're walking on very dangerous ground right now because there is a review embargo, so we can't go in much detail. But one of the things Disney did tell us was that even though they showed it to us this early, we were allowed to share our reactions on Twitter. Right. So I will play it safe and tell you what I wrote on Twitter about yep. Captain America Civil War. And first of all, should, it, it should say this. Right now, Disney, to say they are on a roll is an understatement. Because another movie they have coming out, it's actually opening up this week, is Jungle Book, mm -hmm. all right? I went to go see Jungle Book about a week and a half ago for the first time. And you'll see how this ties into Captain America. And I, before I walked in to go watch it, I tweeted or I, I sent a text message to the PR people at Disney. I said, hey, when's the review embargo? Because usually it's about four or five days before the movie comes out. And they just wrote back, no embargo. And I texted back to them, well, that tells me you guys believe in this film. And sure enough, I go in and I watch Jungle Book. And guys, wait until you see Jungle Book. It is awesome. So now they're showing Captain America Civil War like a month, more than a month early when mm -hmm. that first press screening came that we went to go see. And like if anything screams... We totally believe in this movie. It's showing the credits like a month early and then lifting the review embargo tomorrow. Almost a month out, they're releasing the review embargo. Juxtapose that. And remember, I'm Batman v Superman defender. I like Batman v Superman. I'll defend it to this day. But unlike Warner Brothers, who's, we'll show it to the critics three days before the movie comes out and we'll lift the embargo one day before the movie comes out. The, uh, you know, juxtapose against that, you got Disney saying, nah. We're going to show it to you over a month in advance, and then we want you to start talking about it a month in advance because they were that damn confident. And by my tweets, you'll know they had every right because here's the first tweet I put out. I put out, Captain America Civil War is fantastic. Simply fantastic. Absolutely, that is completely true. While every Avenger in this movie shines, this movie remains a definitively Captain America movie. Again, that's what I put in my tweet. Eh, I put something else on my Twitter that I won't uh, go into. Sorry. But anyway, the bottom line is we recorded a review today that will go up tomorrow. I'm sure we'll be able to talk more in depth about the movie next right. week. I freaking love this film. And as I also put on my Twitter, and you have to understand, I call Avengers the greatest comic book movie ever made. And I walked out of Winter Soldier with my mind blown, not knowing you could even make a comic book movie the way they made that movie. And my big struggle is... Oh my! Oh my God! This might this one might even be better than than Winter Soldier. I say right now I've got Civil War in my number three all time Marvel films. And if you know how much I love Guardians of the Galaxy, and you know how much I love Ant Man, and you know how much I love Kenneth Branagh's Thor, and I'm sitting here to tell you that this movie is better than all of them. I love it. Can't wait for you guys to see it. Full review coming tomorrow. I totally agree with everything John Campia said. I'll say what I said on Twitter. I said, uh, "Wow." Yes, you did. <laughs> Spider-Man rocks. This has the best superhero fight scene ever. 
of any superhero film I've ever seen, this there are several sequences that are just incredible, but there is one which is you, over. You've probably seen everybody tweeting about Yeah, you've about seen this people one, yeah. talking about all you... Oh, and I wrote airport in exclamation points. <laughs> uh, yeah, this movie, uh, to me, we were talking about this earlier, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's neck and neck with Avengers right now as my top all-time superhero film, especially from Marvel. If I had to put like all-time superhero films, like team films, like for me, Dark Knight is still number one as a solo uh, you know, superhero film, but a team film... It's Avengers and Civil War, like, and I can't decide yet. I have to actually wait a month. I'll see both of them again. But Civil War is just an incredible masterpiece. I can just see the, like Amy glowing. Amy, She's so right. excited Sorry, to hear us talk. She hasn't what? seen this yeah. yet. I haven't and seen it yet. It's literally everything you've read is true. I mean, that's one of those kind of like Han Solo. All the things it's you true. heard are true. <laughs> all of it. All of it. You're like all of it. That's right. Get Spider Man, lawn. Black Panther. There. <clears throat> It's astonishing how much they were able to cram into two and a half hours. And being a giant comic book fan, I could uh, just thinking about the airport scene and seeing certain characters fight certain characters. It's stuff you never yeah. would have dreamed. All right, I'm done talking. But to what Schnepp just said, everything you're reading on Twitter, because I know you're reading some pretty glowing stuff on Twitter. Everything you're reading on Twitter is, as he so eloquently put it, is true. All yeah. of it. And we'll go into more details when we actually have a chance to, that when the review I, I actually, yeah, Robert, yeah, Robert and Amy, you could throw us some questions if we can well, answer them. I have something that's it's really weighing heavily on me, and I, I'm sure some of the people out there are going are gonna to want to hear this answer. But, you know, Ant-Man has a new costume mm -hmm. in Civil War, but I don't have the old Ant-Man Hot Toys figure. <laughs> and right. what I really want to know is I only usually get one iteration of the character. Do I get the Ant-Man movie Ant-Man or do I hold out and get the Civil War Ant-Man? That's, that's rough. With that's Mike a Collette. great question. question. I don't know. And you guys, you got to help me out I here. I got to say, you know, I really love the design that they did for that Ant-Man for his standalone film. Because it felt retro yeah, and modern it had that retro all the feel, same But time. this new version is pretty cool, pretty especially sweet. when you see it doing some things. So, so are you telling me that I might have to get both? You're probably going to have to get both. Robert Meyer Burnett, can you imagine that? How much? You don't have room in your house. If I get, had to buy one, if I had to buy one, I'd probably get the original. I, Me personally, right. just because there's 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 a little bit more flavor there with that. The fact that it was the same one that Michael Douglas wore. Now he wore it. Right. It was the first Ant-Man movie. Point. It's kind of the definitive. But this this new one is great, too. But so knowing Robert Meyer Burnett, he's, he's going to get, get both. both. So <laughs> Two copies it's of both. Like, yeah, two do it. doubles. Do you have to get a third one when Ant-Man and the Wasp comes out? Uh, well, hopefully not. Because I think what they did, they were smart with the Civil War. I don't have to get a new Vision. I don't have to get a new Captain America. Actually, I, you, you do. What? Right. Wait. Let's be careful. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Come you on. You man. might have to. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I got to get new Falcon already because you got the white and the red. Well, well look. If you look online, because a whole bunch of pictures on Entertainment Weekly just went on, so it's not even a spoiler. You'll see the Vision in a different, slightly well, he's different. He's got a sweater on. You'll see him in a couple of something, something. Oh, so. really? No, I want the sweater. I want. Yeah. The, I want that. Maybe I can get that, that on the secondary adorable. market. That adorable. Yeah. So, <laughs> Amy, do you have any questions about Civil War that you non-spoiler questions, but. Um, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna wait and and devour it, this movie. Yeah. I, I don't want to put you guys in a bad situation. I just want to drink in anything yeah. that you've all we can to say, say is is if you're a comic book fan, it is delivers a plus. A yeah, thousand. you've seen us. You've yeah. seen both John and I talk about this on Facebook and Twitter. Like, we love this movie. We absolutely love this movie. Uh, the Russos have done it again. Yeah, it's. it's it's just, it's shockingly amazing. You're gonna love this movie, Amy. I, 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 I hope. I hope when I, you see I, it, I, I can you, be in the theater. You probably can't answer this, you. but like, okay, one of the, the best things about Winter Soldier was how well it served the character of Black Widow for yes. me yeah. uh, as an audience member. Uh, do they continue their streak of doing a good job with her? They do a good job with every single character in <laughs> yeah. this movie. Every single character is given a moment, a spotlight to shine. Every single character adds to an accent certain other scenes with other characters. Every single character is woven together in such a, an incredible. Oh, that's what ensemble tight. means. Yeah. Yes. Right. I'll say this, though. I'll yeah. say this. Whereas in Winter, in Winter Soldier, where Steve is clearly the lead character of the film, and Black Widow was clearly the main supporting character. Mm -hmm. In Civil War, that's not the case. Steve is clearly the lead character. Tony is then clearly the lead supporting. Mm -hmm. I'd say the second supporting character then becomes Bucky. Yeah. And then Widow gets in, in there. By necessity. Seems but, like but, it must but, be a portion But it's just what Schnepp just said. It's like, as an ensemble piece, 
I don't want to say too much. It, they're all great. She, they're all great. She, and she's definitely given her due. Believe she's me, given her she's, due. Yeah. yeah. There's awesome. no short changing. You won't feel short changed. Awesome. In fact, you might in, at certain moments cry with both happiness <gasps> and despair is what I could say because okay. it's a very emotional film. So especially if you've seen all the other films, we were talking about that as well. You can see a Captain America Civil War without having seen any other Marvel film and completely fully enjoy it and not feel like you're missing anything. But if you have seen all yes. of the other Marvel films, my God, do they tie in things that are just like little notes and little things, little, little moments that just pay off. I got one more question. <laughs> now, you know we're getting the Ant-Man Wasp movie. Yes. Right. After this movie, can you see in the future at any possible time that we might be getting a Vision and Scarlet Witch movie? We, wow. We, we pro look, that's, you know what? That yeah. gets into we're, some uh, elements yeah. in the movie. We can't we just talk about thank, okay. thank you for... I was about to say something. <laughs> moving on, because that's what we're doing right now. We're moving on to segment number two, Suicide Squad. Yes, that's right. The third trailer. The Blitz trailer is what they're calling it. The action-packed Blitz trailer dropped, this time with more story set up, followed by even more action. Cut to the Ballroom Blitz song. David Ayers has recently made some statements online that the pickups that they're doing are not reshoots to make the film funnier, but actually just additional segments made to plus the film. And we're always intended. In fact, Warner Brothers said, hey, do you want even more money? We totally believe in you. Rock out and add some new flavor. So this newest trailer indeed gives us more humor. This has nothing to do with the reshoots. All this stuff was already shot. You could yeah, tell. Everything in this yeah. trailer was already this shot. This is already yes. in the movie. It's just more humor, more Batman, more Joker, more everything. I love everything I've seen so far. I can't get more excited about Suicide Squad than I am right now. If I, I just really want, I wish I could see it immediately. Uh, Amy, what do you think about this brand new trailer? Um, I'm flashing back to when we were talking about Deadpool coming out and just saying, please live up to this marketing. Right. right. Um, that's where I am with Suicide Squad right now because I'm having significantly more fun with this marketing campaign than I kind of thought I would. Like, I thought that this movie might work really well, but not necessarily be for me. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of winning me over where I'm like, it might work really well and also work for me. Like, this movie <laughs> looks fun right? these aren't necessarily the versions of each of these characters that i would have picked out of the ether to put in a movie but like the thing they've actually made just looks delightful yeah i do have some like man the song you don't own me <laughs> you gotta be careful when you pull that song out and you have to mean it and i wonder because i'm like i'm like 75 percent on board with their usage of it but it is a little funny to be like don't put me on display cut to harley quinn's booty shorts right. like <laughs> I, did you really think it through like a hundred percent but the thing is i love that that's what they're trying to do i love the way that that suggests what they want out of this movie i just hope they can live up to it definitely robert how about you well you know i this third trailer you know what i loved about it i love when you hear the joker laughing over the mm -hmm. warner brothers logo <laughs> and they've got the warner brothers <laughs> logo like <laughs> waving to you <laughs> just i mean i love the fact yeah, that they're totally. willing the, the the corporate branding on this movie they're willing to play with things sure. that you don't we saw that with deadpool and and it shows uh, i think we're, we're moving into a new realm of marketing with these films that kind of go along but i also think that i always thought of this movie was a black comedy like the doctor's strange love of comic book movie mm, for sure and this idea that we're going to inject more humor into it how is it more humorous than suicide squad and all these characters it's a black comedy it always it always has been they're not going to give it more like raunchy porky's animal house right or for the modern age she's all that humor right is <laughs> dead shot gonna be I mean, peek, peeping through the shower hole at, right. at no, harley it's quinn none of that i mean it, it looks like the humor the tone of this movie is exactly what it's supposed to be Definitely. And it can work as a superhero film or as a black comedy. I'm s John. What are you thought? What are your thoughts on the Look, new trailer? Look, at Comic Con last year, like to me, hands down, the best trailer that came out of Comic Con last year was the Batman v Superman one. But a very close second for me, and number one to a lot of other people, was that Suicide Squad trailer. Yeah. This trailer crushes that trailer. Mm -hmm. It absolutely crushes that trailer. And my favorite moment of the trailer is actually the second time we hear Joker's laugh, ha ha, and then everybody just freezes in yeah. fear, <laughs> and then it cuts to Harley going. Uh oh. Yeah. It's like, okay, they're gonna make Joker somebody feared. I love it. If if even these guys, the baddest of the bad, if they're setting up that the Joker instills fear in even into the Suicide Squad, the baddest of the bad, that now maybe that was a trailer trick where certain things were cut right, out of right. order and then put together in such a way that's actually deceiving. 
then oh well. But if it's if it's true to the movie, I think that's spectacular. And look, the humor in this trailer. Remember, this, once again, it goes back to that report that was going around that, oh, Suicide Squad's reshooting everything because they're just reacting to the BVS things right. and they're going to put in more humor. We told you, Schnapp and I told you, no, no, we happen to know that this film is loaded with humor. Everything in this new trailer that they said there was no other fun except for right. what was in that first trailer it was all stuff that was already shot, as John has already mentioned. This trailer looks so great. It's not at that Deadpool level for right. me yet about how good the marketing is making me, but it's coming close because I cannot wait for this movie to open. I agree 100%, Robert. You have something to add. I just wanted to say, like, the way that they're slowly giving us Jared Leto's The Joker is so great. Nice. It's, a nice it's such a little, it. it's like I'm on some kind of weird Joker drip. And I'm like, <laughs> right. I just want a little bit more. And he's like, ah, here's a little one more shot. Or that one manic picture that you could see right in that corner right there, where he's like really scary looking. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, so, so many moments. And of course, a lot of people went nuts seeing those little extra added little moments of Batman. You know, I think it's all part of one scene, but it's nice to know that Batman has a full scene, hopefully has a full scene in this. Maybe they're, maybe one of, one of the reshoots they're doing is adding more Batman. We don't know what they're doing but it's not just it's not at making it funnier because for sure john and i definitely had you know some inside knowledge about some of the stuff in this in the movie some of the jokes some of the script and it's it just sounds like the 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 tone of the film is what you're seeing in these trailers it's gonna have humor it's gonna it's and i love the way will smith was talking to el diablo that to me gave that camaraderie <laughs> that a just a little bit of that flavor that i'm like just give me a little bit more and that's just enough hey man, i was just trying to get more. you there yeah it's just we're good no, no, yeah it's just just enough to get get me really amped to see this robert what do you oh, want they even paid off that joke i think you need some water just <laughs> that's give me a right water. that's Probably right a that's a good choice. idea honey. good choice yeah. honey what i love about what they're doing we, it's all character-based humor about the Suicide Squad itself. Yeah. We don't know who they're fighting. Right. We don't know the threat. What country are they in when their helicopter yeah, right. gets shot down? Uh, we yeah, have no we idea. don't know anything. I think that's that, again, it shows that finally we're getting marketing that understands how to market to this audience. Right. I mean, I think anybody, anybody who sees this film, anybody who sees the trailers, even if you're not a comic book fan, it makes you want to see, they've done such a good job of establishing these characters and with little bits, mm -hmm. that even if you're not a comic book fan, you want to come, this movie's gonna entertain you. Yeah. And uh, I don't care if you're a sports fan, you're a wrestling fan, or you're a superhero fan, you're gonna want to see this movie. But I like the fact that we don't know yeah, and anybody from the Warner Brothers marketing team, if you're watching this, don't ruin the movie by showing all of the end, the last 30 <laughs> minutes. Let all of us, you're all the fans who are waiting to see this movie, where you've already got our money. The way you're doing your trailers right now is perfect. Please don't overdo it. We, we're yeah. not stupid. We want to see the movie, but we also want to enjoy it. Don't spoil it all and show every single moment of the film in a micro 30 second thing. Please don't do that. They're going to give us a little bit more. I, yeah, think that, I, I definitely want a fourth trailer like in two months, right? Like right be, a month before it comes out. I just don't show everything. Yeah, and I know? guarantee you too. He, one of the things became very apparent because even the the detractors of of Batman versus Superman, uh, amongst the vast majority of people out there, the people who liked the movie and the people who didn't like the movie, one thing that's pretty much universal, we all like the Ben Affleck Batman. Yeah. And I think, so I knew that the next trailer, you're going to see glimpses of Batman. I guarantee you, whether there's one, two, or three more trailers to come, all of them will have at least one shot of Batman. Yeah. Because they know that's kind of their, their big name attached to it, even if he's only going to be in it for a scene or two or three or four, however many going to be so i think you're going to probably see him at least have a presence but i hope it's the same kind of presence as they did in this trailer which is a couple of quick glimpses like oh by totally. the way batman's in this everybody right, right. and then just leave it at that <laughs> definitely and you guys want to add any less stuff to go on to the next subject well let's talk about the inhumans and now it's not happening it's not part of phase three we don't know if it's part of phase 11 or 44 <laughs> what uh, whatever phase that kevin feige is going to do he's unsure about the inhumans uh, moving forward, so he said it's been pushed back to make room for basically the new Spider-Man film that they're do they're co-producing with Sony, and also the Ant-Man and the Wasp sequel. So what are let's just talk about this. We're, we're going to address the Inhumans in our spotlight section, but let's talk about what other possible Phase Four films could be coming after 2019. Because we already know, I mean, basically Avengers: Infinity War Part One and Two. We've got Spider-Man. We've got Black Panther. We've got Guardians of the Galaxy Two. We've got Thor Ragnarok. We've got Doctor Strange. Um, what's left? Well, I think you know that Kevin Feige talks about how we're going to do different genres of movies. Mm -hmm. I think our first epic romance is going to be The Vision and Scarlet Witch. Mm. Like the Out of Africa of the MCU or the Gone with the Wind of the MCU. Why not? Of course, you have to explain 
to the kids at home, how does the vision in Scarlet Witch ended up getting married if he's an android, not a real person? Right. Could that be weird? No, don't don't explain it to the kids. The kids are the only people who won't be confused because they don't know how it normally works. Right. So they don't want to marry a robot. They're more evolved than we are, so they're not going to be worried. Yeah, in fact, they'd just be more accepting of it. I've always wanted to hang out with a robot. It makes total sense. (laughs) I would marry that guy. (laughs) The end. He picks up Thor's hammer. He's a good man. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. I I would probably marry anyone who could pick up Thor's hammer. (laughs) Did they announce Captain Marvel? No. The the movie or the... They did as part of the MCU slate. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, It's announced. When is that coming out? It's gotten pushed a couple times, but uh, yes, it has. I last I heard was 2019, but 2019. It could be further. I know The Rock at the MTV Movie Awards. He actually, when he was on the carpet, he dropped some Black Adam. He said Black Adam's coming. So I, I thought there was a chance that maybe he was off that project and was jumping on Lobo. Other Captain Marvel. Yes, but so now we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Like, right. look to me, the big news in this though isn't about what movies might be coming in, in four. To me, what really piqued my interest about this, I am not surprised at all that Inhumans is getting pushed. Why? Because ever since there was the great divorce right. between Kevin Feige and Perlmutter and that big divide, because remember, Feige used to report to Perlmutter. Now Kevin Feige doesn't report to Perlmutter, but Perlmutter still oversees everything that has to do with television. And everything that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., everything revolves around the Inhumans right now. Right. And herein lies why I'm always preaching that I like the DC approach to their to their movie universe and their TV universe by keeping them separate. Because I... What... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is doing is probably completely mucking up any plans that Marvel had with using the Inhumans because since they're in the shared cinematic right. universe, they have to be consistent with each other. So I, I, I'm going to go on record. I don't think Inhumans as a movie is ever going to happen as long as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is still on television. I could definitely mm-hmm. see maybe not the Inhumans, but something along the lines of like, you know, Avengers, the Kree, Skrull Wars, just even though they can't use Skrulls, something along those lines. Sure. And once yeah. they've introduced, like they've already introduced the cosmic Marvel universe with Guardians. Now they're going to bring all of our characters from Earth into the cosmos with Infinity Wars 1 and 2. So you know, you just know that, like, I know they mentioned Star-Lord and Thor. The Russos mentioned those guys are going to be Infinity Wars. We're all guessing that everyone's going to be in Infinity Wars. I mean, you know, they also announced all of Infinity Wars Part 1 and 2 is being shot completely in IMAX. So the entire film is going to be in IMAX. That's that just so spectacular. is wow. insanity. I mean... I mean, seeing um, Batman v Superman, the IMAX scenes are really are spectacular. They yeah. really are, because you're going like this, and boom, like you just—it's double the footage of like, oh my god, it's it's pretty impressive what Snyder was able to do visually with that film. The Russos, I think, are going to be able to take that to that next level with the entire film, both films being IMAX. I don't even know what that's going to do to my brain. I might just melt down or something from the pure awesomeness. But um, yeah, I, I could see a Kree, a Kree Skrull Wars, some kind of like something where they keep expanding on the cosmic uh, warlock would be a definite mm-hmm. another film that could be a standalone. I think one of the problems too with the Inhumans is I love Black Bolt. Mm-hmm. Black Bolt is a great character, but he doesn't talk. Mm-hmm. Like no matter who you put, he basically stands around and looks stoic and I mean how do you build a franchise o- around your leader that with the can't... most badass Medusa of all time absolutely yeah, that's what I mean he reacts like Medusa you're right, basically it's a weird talks challenge. for him sure but it's just a bizarre I don't I, in film it's a I weird mean, thing to take on yeah well, I mean, Vin I Diesel love... I mean look Vin Diesel had pretty much he'd pretty much come out and said it I'm gonna be Black Bolt right. I mean yeah. that's basically when he keeps talking about everything and if you notice now that this story comes out it makes me sit back and realize wow Diesel hasn't said anything about this in months now right because he was pretty regular saying giving off more hints about black bolt and i'm almost inhuman and then talking right. about not speaking on and i think i think it was clear he was going to be black bolt i think that that's a foregone conclusion and i think you know he's done pretty good with marvel characters that don't speak much with group <laughs> um so so i, I think it would have been fine they would have found a way to do it but uh, again uh, it's just another sign pointing to we're probably not getting it at well, all. We'll talk about it. We're going to use the Inhumans as a spotlight just to talk about all the different characters and what we think if it would work better as just a Marvel television series or a movie. But we'll talk about that right after we do this which is called Minor Mutations. We're going to talk about some things from the week in uh, superhero news and we'll just uh, pick some stuff to talk about. So number one we got Wolverine 3 cast its main villain with Boyd Holbrook. Number two we got Daredevil's own Charlie Cox saying he knows when the Defenders are going to start shooting because he's the one who forms the Defenders and it's going to start shooting later this year, I think November or December. Uh, Creed's Tessa Thompson actually joins Thor... Let's get to that next one. Yeah, 
That's her, Tessa Thompson. If you saw her in Creed, you, you might have enjoyed her music. Now she gets to do beautiful music in Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> uh, number four, we've got Star-Lord and Thor have been confirmed by the Russo brothers as appearing in Avengers Infinity War. They don't have a script yet, but they know what the direction they're going. They have the story mapped out for both one and two. It's going to be epic. Number five, we've got Snyder and WB are going to be handling Justice League a little bit slightly differently, mo trying to make it more of a kinetic crowd pleaser. So that's some news that came out where they're, they're they're really going to just really kind of, I think, give the fans what they have been asking for. Uh, and finally, number six, we've got Dwayne Johnson wearing the Black Adam T-shirt for the <laughs> MTV Movie Awards. Literally still sticking around saying, look, I know we announced this about nine or ten years ago that Shazam was <laughs> happening, whatever it's called, but I'm going to be the villain. Uh, let's talk about this. Let me lead it off with talking about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I would love to see him play a dual role of both Shazam and Black Adam. We have the technology. We saw the Jungle Book. I saw animals talk and I believed it. I <laughs> saw the Jungle Book last night. Yep. I know it's not a superhero film, but you should see it this Friday because it's really a great Unbelievable. Mowgli's a hero though, right? Mowgli is basically a super a man cub. So <laughs> and if you want to see see a Christopher Walken as King Louie, come on. <laughs> Please give them your money because you just gotta see that. So anyway. Jungle Book made me believe that anything is possible at this point. So I would like to see The Rock fight The Rock as Shazam and Black Adam. So well, I mean, what do you guys think of this, some of this news? That was kind of a, a pet theory. A friend of mine who's a huge uh, DC's version of Captain Marvel fan, had, as soon as they started talking about The Rock, thought like he had always wanted him to play the big red cheese mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. Shazam, as we call him now, is uh, is an interesting character, but like he loses something if you go pure serious with him. And if you can, like there's this sort of impossible balance of trying to be a bit goofy, but um, impressive at the same time. And The Rock is literally that guy yeah. who can do that. Yep. No one else can do that. You're right. And it seems like, and I'm sure he'll be a great Black Adam, but it, it does seem like a weird kind of wait, missed opportunity. How about you? What do you guys think? Well, we, we've, you and I have been saying actually for the two years now that this has been going on that we've always believed it's a distinct possibility that DC is going to drop a bomb on everybody and say The Rock is actually playing both. Now, they have to play around with the mythology a little bit, but remember, Black Adam, the connection between Black Adam and Shazam runs deep and where they get the, the source of where they get their power from and all that kind of stuff. It's actually not a huge leap to say, tweak this little thing in the story and this little thing in the story, and now you've basically got a, a scenario where Shazam Black Adam are basically mirror images of each other, and you could have that. And I, I've always believed that's a possibility, not like a nine out of 10 possibility, but a good five, five and a half sure. possibility. And I th think that's still the case, and we'll see how it all turns out. Robert? Well, it's interesting that you say that because I edited a science fiction time tra travel thriller that actually comes out on limited theatrical release or VOD or iTunes next week. Good What's it called? What is it it's called? It's called Paradox, but the reason I bring Aww. it up is because, spoiler alert, don't listen to this, it might have a scene or two where an actor plays dual roles. Nice. And it was really interesting putting it together. It's Jean-Claude Van Damme, isn't it? it if it's Jean-Claude Van Damme, I'm yeah. totally in. But what was interesting <laughs> about that was seeing how, a, how an actor could play these two very different people. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think you guys are right. I think The Rock could play both you know, Black Adam and play the Big Red Cheese, play Captain Marvel, Shazam, whatever we're going to call him. You can't call him Captain Marvel well, anymore. But There's a lot of, uh, like, Jet Li in The One. He played a bad guy and a good right. guy. Nick, Nick Cage played and, Brothers and Adaptation. And I think that would be great. See. I mean, yeah. they, he looks, they look the same. Why not? But I really want to talk about Tessa Thompson. Let me just, before uh, we move on, I want to say what you brought up about The Rock having that, that energy to play both. That makes that sold it for me. That man, they're missing an opportunity. Even though we've been talking about it, but that really sold it for me. Like that, that there is only one person who can actually make Shazam cool, right. and it's The Rock because yep. he is kind of a goofy. Like people make fun of Superman. Give me a break. Everybody's making fun of Shazam. That's all there is to it. Unless you get someone in that role who can be that both that duality of that character. So. I'm sorry. And, so go well, ahead. He's in that. Well, back to that. He's in that movie with Kevin Hart where he plays a CIA agent. Right. And he's kind of this. Yeah, goofy, I can't wait to see funny, that. Actually. Doesn't fun. that look good? Yeah, it, it looks really like fun. it's a lot of fun. And if he had brought that flavor to the to the role, I mean, I think it's a great idea. And then you you have him go really dark with Black yeah. Adam. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's one of the great the 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 great. I, I mean, I keep going back to Kingdom Come, the fight between. Shazam and fantastic. And it's one of my but they can echo that. Ever. They can actually make right. make the Shazam character a Superman esque and, right. and Black Adam could be saying Shazam or whatever, bringing that lightning. Whatever they could they could emulate that scene in a way. So. Uh, it could be great. 
Yeah, it could be great. Tessa Thompson, you were going to say Okay, I got to say, I, I fell in love with her. Sure, she's in great. Creed. I mean, I love her. She's great in Creed, yeah. She was so good in Creed, her character. I mean, losing her hearing, and she sings, and she's so beautiful, and she knows where to get good Philly cheesesteaks. I mean, <laughs> she's like the perfect girlfriend, and, and she wouldn't take any guff. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she set uh, Adonis... Put him on the straight and narrow. I really liked her and those lips and that face. Oh. She's a beautiful actress, and, and I'm looking I, forward. What she a great, great, what a great, movie. What a great uh, choice. I don't know who she's going to be playing, but maybe she's otherworldly or or some. I want to see her as a superheroine because mm. she kind of was to me in Creed. Why not? Uh, maybe she her. plays the Hulk's girlfriend because it's like a, a while back when the Hulk went to this weird. This wasn't even World War Hulk. It was like back in the I think in the 80s. He went to some weird planet. And there was kind of like a She-Hulk looking. Uh, do you remember? I think her name was Juniper or something. Sorry, any any of you guys who know her name, throw it in the comment section if you're watching this. It was the Hulk's girlfriend. I can't remember her name right now. It was from the 80s. He was on like a, a crazy, you know, planet. It was before Planet Hulk, but they went back and revisited that. Like where Scar came from? Uh, even before that. Okay. This was, yeah, this is 80s. So. She was a great, I mean, she has a strength and a vulnerability about her. That she at least she brought to Creed that I think is difficult to play. Yeah, I agree. And and you never believe that she was ever compromised in her affection or her relationship with Adonis. And I I think that that's the kind of thing you need for an actress to work in a superhero movie. Definitely, she brought an extra uh, vulnerability and an extra layer of character to that film Creed, which right. helped sell that relationship. Um, I also wanted to touch on. I'm really happy. I was happy to read yesterday that uh, WB, along with Zack Snyder, are gonna give Justice League a little bit of a different flavor than you know what Batman v Superman and Man of Steel had, which is a little lighter flavor and a little bit more of certain things that they know the audience wants. Like, not just big action set pieces, but a lot of back and forth with the characters. So, I don't know if that means, like, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be a page one rewrite, because they started shooting yesterday. So they actually started shooting Justice League yesterday, so whatever, they have set up, and we've already heard Zack Snyder talk about, well, Batman is gonna be kind of like assembling this team, and it's gonna be a little bit like the Magnificent Seven, like I gotta get this team together. He's got Wonder Woman already, so you know it leaves a couple characters. It leaves a Flash, it leaves um, uh, Cyborg, Aquaman, Cyborg, Cyborg and Aquaman. So, what about and, Wendy, Marvin, and the Wonder Twins? <laughs> I don't Form know. Form of a bucket of water. Yeah. Maybe they're going to bring those characters. Form of a box office flop. Yeah, I don't Aww. know if the Wonder Twins are, are re I don't know if the world is ready for the Wonder Twins. <laughs> well, then Wendy and Mark. All right, well, let's move on to a, a, a special wonder thing that I like to call flashback. It's Iron Man 3 this week. We are talking about Iron Man 3 from Shane Black, writing and directing this. Uh, he worked with uh, Tony Stark himself, Robert Downey Jr., in a little film called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is fantastic if you've never seen it. Um, adapting the Warren Ellis extremist storyline and mixing that with elements of many different comics, this third entry introduces the feared terrorist arms dealer called the Mandarin, played by Ben Kingsley. Tony and Pepper have been going through some relationship issues, and Guy Pierce enters the picture as a technological competitor. Let's talk about Iron Man 3. I mean, I'll say it right off the bat. This, you know, if you haven't seen Iron Man 3, we're going to get into spoilers, so get to go move on down to the next thing. But let's talk about Iron Man 3, 2, one, so the Mandarin. A lot of people were really upset about the way the Mandarin was portrayed in this movie, albeit he was a trick, it was a joke. He was an actor played by Ben Kingsley, and the real Mandarin was Guy Pierce. I forget well, his character's name. Not <laughs> really, because what we later find out in the Marvel shorts right. is that Ben Kingsley later gets broken out of prison by there is a real Mandarin right, out right. there. Look, I'm gonna say this. I I liked Iron Man 3. I liked that movie. Look, and this is one of those things where I didn't have a problem with it, but I totally understood the people who were really mad at this movie because they said, in all of your marketing, you promised us the Mandarin, right. and they did not give you the Mandarin. They gave you something else posing as the Mandarin, and I understood that people were upset by that, and I understand where they're coming from, so you're not going to hear an argument from me that you shouldn't be upset by that. I'm just saying that to me... As a plot element, it worked. And mm -hmm. when the turn happens in Ben Kingsley, and he becomes this that kind of English buffoon dude talking about the soccer scores and double teaming two blondes in the bed, I thought it was funny and charming, and it worked for me. Um, to me, it was a it was a decidedly better movie than Iron Man Two. Not not nearly as good as Iron Man One, right. but I think it comes in the middle there. And you saw a little bit of that magic between Shane Black 
and uh, Robert Downey Jr. again that we mm -hmm. got in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. And some of the action, the visuals are really good. I thought uh, Ty Simkin, I think that's the name of the kid, in it, totally. who was also went on to be in Jurassic World. I thought he was a really nice counterpart to Tony in that. And look, is it didn't make my top 10 favorite Marvel films. But still, I enjoyed that movie. I thought it was a worthy addition to the to the canon of the MCU, and, and I had fun with it. Definitely. How about you, Robert? Well, I, you know, I really liked it, too, because remember, you're coming off the heels of Avengers, this gigantic right. and epic. You couldn't do that with this movie. You kind of, I like the fact that it was introspective and that Tony Stark's like, I fought aliens, yeah. you know, and his whole worldview has the been sort of... The fact he's PST in this. Yeah, he really does, and it's been sort of torn asunder, and he really doesn't know, like, well, now what do you do when you live in a world where aliens can attack the Earth? I mean, it was enough to meet Thor, but now they're Loki and a bunch of aliens. They don't know Thanos is out there yet, but he is. Right. And, and what is that man... It's, it's about a man kind of trying to put the pieces of his life back together. And I liked the Mandarin. It was, everything about this movie subverted your expectations. Mm -hmm. And I thought as a movie, it made it interesting. Like you went in and you didn't get something that, that you, you might have expected to get. And it was different all the way, way through. The only thing in the movie that, that irks me is when he's got a suit of armor that basically flies piece by piece a thousand miles. Like... How does pieces of armor? Yeah. I know it's a weird no, thing, but, I get it. I but get it's it. like how I'm watching this and I'm like totally with it. And I'm like, wait a minute. How do these individual pieces of armor fly a thousand miles? <laughs> like, I get it. Like we saw it was really cool in Age of Ultron where he has the Hulkbuster. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a separate thing that brings it to him. I right. guess we can assume that that's what I did. got a friend of mine on, on Facebook, a filmmaker uh, by the name of Peter Biggs. And he often writes on, on his social media about this kind of stuff. And something, something that he said reminds me a lot of Iron Man 3, which is, I love science fiction. He said, I love science fiction. And the fact that like Iron Man or these movies, whatever, is science fiction, right? But at some point, what they're doing with supposed science crosses the line into fantasy magic. Right. And in Iron Man 3, they start doing stuff with Tony and his armor that was no longer science fiction. It was just pure fantasy magic. That he was doing, and it, that that part does take me out of it. I would yeah. I would one up that by saying the scene earlier where he's in he's piloting the ghost armor and it explodes, gets hit by a truck and it just falls apart. Right. That's that those elements of it I didn't like, but those are small elements. Right, they are. Amy, how about you? Um, you sort of hit the nail on the head. I think I'm very fond of this film. I was happy with a lot of their choices. It was, uh, in some ways, I wasn't as vulnerable to the misleading because this was in my hardcore avoid all trailers phase. Uh. So, uh, <laughs> it, it so it was great. I got to sit down, like only going into it with comic book knowledge of Mandarin, and be like, I guess we're gonna see him. Oh no, we're not. And also, you did just awesomely sideline some difficult elements of the Mandarin as a character yeah. and I had to take my hats off to them because I loved that they did that and I loved how they pulled it off. Although there is a viable version of the Mandarin from the Matt Fraction Iron Man run that I love a lot that they could go back to if they want to do that. Um, and, and I loved a lot of that stuff that it incorporated. Like I loved the way there was to me, almost a nod to the rescue storyline from when Matt Fraction was writing Iron Man when Pepper Potts briefly got a suit of armor. Mm -hmm. They kind of tease in that direction and they use elements of that story for the movie. I, I thought a lot of it worked. I loved that it was centrally about sort of this PTSD experience Tony's having uh, post-Avengers. It makes it difficult in some ways to integrate with the wider Marvel thing because like he... He gets paranoid, overbuilds his armors, destroys them all, and then is still Iron Man in the next movie. Right. But like, I don't know. I think that was worth it to tell this really interesting story, and I enjoyed it a lot. I yeah. just want to point out that you, you, they did just, Hot Toys did just come out with a Pepper Potts Iron Man armor two-pack. <laughs> from Iron Man 3. They just did. I just want to say that more hot armor. toys have come out of Iron Man 3 than any other movie. Well, I mean, if you calculate, yeah. there must be like $10,000 worth of action figures that have come out of this film. Didn't Ooh. the movie end with like 30 different the Iron House Man armors? The House Party Protocol. Yeah, so there's just so many. Uh, and so they're many making Iron every Man's. one of them. Wow. Oh my gosh. That is quite impressive. I, I loved Iron Man 3, I have to say. Um, it's just like John said. It's like in between Iron Man and Iron Man 2. It's like it, it lands firmly in there. Um, I love that they tricked all of us with the Mandarin, and it was very pleasing. It was like, ah, oh, yeah. my God. And ben, ben Kingsley, when you get an actor who can do that, is when it's even better. When yeah. you have someone who could play 
the dark heavy and then all of a sudden flip it and he's like a bumbling idiot acting you know i'm a thespian you know it just it was really fun i thought the the flip and having guy pierce be the actual secret mandarin villain arms dealer and even hey he's not even really the, yeah. the mandarin the mandarin is like you know a cloaked you know monster that can show up at any time who knows if he'll show up in the future but it was definitely a really fun film and i actually liked all the kind of tony stark as ethan hunt moments where it was like it was basically like mission impossible yeah. just he had one boot and it really one was glove, more a tony you know, stark movie totally. than an iron man movie yeah, a lot really of people was. but totally. a lot of people complained about we didn't sure. have enough iron man but i felt i'm cool with that i had just enough iron man and just enough of a different story to make it refreshing in iron man pantheon you know, you know i think that was important because i think it was important because it settled that look tony stark is a hero He's mm. not just a guy with a cool set of armor, so that lets him do cool things. Outside of the armor, in his heart, Tony Stark is a hero. And I think the, the, by them giving more attention to Tony Stark outside of the armor, really kind of drives that home, makes us appreciate the Iron Man character even more. Definitely. Right, the relationship he has with that the boy. Which is great. You know, yeah. it, it wasn't pandering. It didn't, I thought, yeah, really, you're going to do this? But it worked really well, and it was actually very heartfelt. And... You know, they helped each other out, and I really like that element where it could have been cheesy. Yeah, for sure, it, it really worked. The reason why I brought in Iron Man three here is because we've been every week we're building towards Captain America: Civil War, and this is just another puzzle piece. Next week we'll have another one, and uh, I think it's going to be. I think we're going to do Winter Soldier. I think next week, and then we nice. do Age of Ultron. That's it's a and good we timing. Rock, we rock on in. So uh, let's move on to Spotlight. We talked a little bit about the Inhumans. Now let's talk about all of them. We got Black Bolt. We got a lot of characters. Let's talk about the Inhumans. Introduced in the Fantastic Four back in the 60s, created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. They're a hidden race of mutated humans, transformed by the Kree's ancient alien Terrigen mists. They remain in hiding, led by Black Bolt, who stays silent because his voice would lay waste to entire cities. Also part of the Inhumans are Medusa, Triton, Karnak, a whole bunch of different weirdos, all really cool characters. You have Crystal over there in the blonde, uh, the the uh, orange hair with the yellow outfit. I can't remember the guy with the uh, the boot stompies over in the far <laughs> the left. Remember that stompies. guy? He's got kind of like cloven hooves. Gorgon. He, Gorgon. Thank you. She rocked it. And Karnak, of course, is the master of all disciplines of kung fu and karate. And you got Triton over there with the multiple scales. Right in the front there, you have Black Bolt, and he is pretty cool looking. Um, so let's talk about the Inhumans here. Uh, we, we, we These characters have been slowly kind of introduced in the TV series, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and they've been tentatively announced as coming out as a Marvel phase. It was phase three, and now it's phase four, I guess phase whatever. Uh, Kevin Feige just basically took it off the took it off the uh took it off the date. shelf yeah um will the inhumans make a better television series now that they've already been introduced in agents of shield and they're showing inhumans they're talking about them they're part of the the storyline now or will they make that jump from tv to the cinema it already is look I, look if you watch agents of shield and i begrudgingly have because I, i'll give credit where it's due this season has been a, a a good, not a bad season. It's been a definitely improvement on the show, and I trash Agents of Shield because it deserves it. It's been a god awful, terrible oh, show. It's fun but, sometimes. but you know, a lot of people kept writing me, John. It's getting better. Check out, and I have been, and I will give it its due. It's, it's been getting better. Agents, uh, season three. Season three, I should say. Yes, okay. but here's the thing. It, it's it, the Inhumans already have a television show now. It's called Agents of Shield. It may be called Agents of Shield, but make no mistake, this show is all about Inhumans really? now. Everything about this show is about Inhumans. It's just it happens to be led by Phil Coulson, uh, Clark Gregg, who is even in its worst seasons, Clark Gregg rocks it as Coulson. I love Clark. Gregg. I think he's incredible, great character too in Coulson, and he's the he's the main piece of this show. But really, the show is all about the Inhumans. Really, so now it's a question Since the about beginning of the second season. It's yeah. all about whether you bring this in. They even tried to touch a little bit for the slightest moment themes of because one of the coolest things about the Inhumans to me isn't so much all these dudes with these mutant powers. It's like you get into the royal family yeah. and you get right. into the behind the scenes drama of the Inhumans and that's where it really- with Maximus. Yes, that's where it gets unique amongst a lot of the other story char characters and story uh, story arcs in the different titles. It seems like they're shying away from that in, the, in this realm. So could we get an Inhumans TV show? I think we already do have one. So I don't think they're gonna do anything else outside of that. But you're saying they're not, they're not showing anything about like Black Bolt Black or his Bolt's brother Maximus nope. or any of the nope. main the or main, the moon 
Or the yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're on the, the moon right now. The supposedly, they they well, you have to there. divide in humans' history kind of into pre and post Jonathan Hickman's Infinity. Yes, right. only about what two years ago, three right. years ago. But it's a very bright dividing line in the way the Inhumans work in the Marvel universe, and like the the TV show is very post that. Yes, um, and the movie I guess that we were going to get seems like it was more the version that we remember. With with the the distinctive traits being their isolation and right. their like dynastic issues and and other things, and I like both versions, but it is weird. Like I, I I'm so curious about like what uh, what is the calculus behind the scenes on all this stuff. But I guess this is the spotlight panel, so we can just talk about the Inhumans who are rad, and you yeah. should all read the Paul Jenkins J Lee miniseries. Definitely. Um, and Lockjaw, who is not in that photo, is the greatest character ever. And if they can just bring him to screen in some form, I will be happy. Can I just say that I moved my Lockjaw statue that I have? Just the bust of him with the weird, you know, <laughs> sonic, you know, what is that tuning fork that he's got <laughs> on his head? Just moved it to my office. I'll get a I'll get a picture up on my Instagram later of Lockjaw. Thank you for mentioning him. He's my favorite super dog. He he can teleport. He basically has, he's just a friendly dog that's giant, like the size of a bear. And you hang out with him and he'll teleport you to wherever you want to go. Who doesn't want an animal like that? So anyway, you guys, I think, but you just talked about John, talking about specifically Dynasty. I would love to see an Inhumans television series, but almost like Game of Thrones, but takes place on the moon. That would be mm. pretty cool, and you could take it away from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You could still put it on TV. Uh, Perlmutter, whatever his name is, uh, Ike Perlmutter, Ike he can still be in charge of it. But I think if it's going to be a series and it's going to be done the right way and they aren't going to do it as a movie, that's the way to play it. Play it with the with the, the dynasty aspect of it, of the, you know, the, the different families who are at war with each other. Well, I, you know, you mentioned the Paul Jenkins, J. Lee miniseries, which I have, I've, I have hard cover of that. I've read that, I don't know, 10 times. I love that run. There's, there's a feel to it. And I think that's what I've been incredulous about, about this series. Like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Inhumans don't seem like they're two great flavors that go great together because the Inhumans is so big mm. and so fantastical. And the fact that they're trying to, I found the whole, both season two and season three of S.H.I.E.L.D. really sort of weird. Like they, they, it went from being this okay, the post Hydra shields running from the remnants of Hydra. Now it's turned into the the Inhuman show, and now they want to have the Mockingbird series. How is that all gonna work? Like I don't know if I've, I, I watch it just to see what they're gonna do hmm. because they're so different. It seems like they're these two diametrically opposed. One sort of this espionage, you know, you want to see Jim Steranko shield, sure, you want to get into that, but but the Inhumans are this like Kirby. Jack, uh, like Kirby at the height of his power, Kirby, you know, creating these massive, giant characters. And I, it's, it's a weird, I just can't believe we have a TV show where we're watching S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Inhumans are being brought into it. Sell me on this, because I have not watched Agent season three or two. I watched cer certain episodes of season one, which I did like the ending of season one with Bill Paxton. I thought that was a lot of fun. So I, well, I should I be watching pretty... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season three if I liked the Inhumans? The whole thing is is sort of crazy a lot of the time, but like yeah. season, every time I'm watching or catching up on Agents of Shield, and and unfortunately I've only seen the first two seasons, but like I I go through this phase of like it's kind of winning me over, it's kind of winning me over, it's completely insane, it's completely insane, like but I enjoy it a lot of the time, and like there was a really wonderful sensation watching season two unfold, where they they slowly unraveled the mystery of like a hidden city that we all pretty quickly assumed figured out was going to be not Adeline, but an inhuman hidden city uh, okay. and it's all secrets and <laughs> like and it makes me as an x-men fan it's been tough to watch because the new version of the inhumans is very similar to the x-men right. so you're playing out a lot of the same issues but like that's also satisfying at a certain level where it's like i'm kind of watching a shield show with pieces of inhuman mythology and pieces of x-men mythology mm -hmm. like uh, playing out it's it's pretty compelling but when I they find say. a hidden city it's like a room you know, it's some quarters. They don't, they don't have the, they don't have the budget. It was, yeah. it was a city. It's just that they were looking for one particular room in that city. <laughs> right, it's true. Yeah. But so, I'm, I'm waiting to yeah, see you know, some. You haven't sold me yet. <laughs> uh, but if I was going to watch any of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season three, like you guys have, you guys have watched season three, are there any standout episodes which would help me as like yes not? yeah I, I think there are a couple of standout remember I'm I'm the anti Agents of Shield right. guy and I I think there are some definite standout moments it's got a couple of weak episodes too this season but yeah there are some definite highlight episode moments especially when they start getting into this how do I describe them I don't want to talk about what goes on goes on with 
um, uh, ward and things like that. But there's a there's a new element. There's a new enemy involved, and it's pretty cool. And I'm not talking about Lash. Um, mm -hmm. good, but so good. yeah, yeah, there definitely are. All right, well, definitely, I'll, I'll look forward to checking it out in the future. Let's move on to Twitter questions. This week, I can't. There, none are going to show up on screen because it just it's been a very hectic day. So I'm just going to read them out. Blue, blue, blue ha asks. Uh, hope Schnepp will do the trailer reaction for Doctor Strange. Really want to see you get sweaty. Well, guess what? That's probably going to happen. I'm going to get sweaty. I don't know if you're going to get a trailer reaction, but all of us are going to like be talking about it oh, on online. We might do some separate periscopes. For, so definitely look for Robert Meyer Burnett, John Campia, myself, and Amy Dallin to be doing some reactions. I'll be it either verbal on screen or just written on Twitter and Instagram. Check yeah, it follow out. Follow us on Twitter. Yeah. Don't sure they know they should drop these us. trailers on Monday night? I know. So we can do I the know. trailer reviews Fools. on Tuesdays. Soon you'll, Kimmel. Why does Kimmel keep getting all this flavor? Drop some flavor on Heroes. What's up? Anyway, we can't <laughs> wait to see the Doctor Strange trailer. It's going to be online tonight. Uh, next question. Evil Abraham Lincoln. Love you, man. <laughs> keep asking these good questions. Sup, sweaties. Do you guys think Dark Side should be CGI mocap or a live action performance? And then who would you cast? Let's go to around the table, CGI live action. I think it should be a combination of both. I mean, we saw in uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, you know, you saw Davy Jones. Sure. That was a real actor with CG makeup right. effects. I thought it worked great. I mean, an all CG character is fine, but I'm really curious to see Oscar Isaac. I mean, you had a real actor in a real suit, right? not CG. How is that going to look in a finished film? I think it, it depends how it's done. But I like a real actor. I like to be able to see a real actor's face. Thanos was all CG. Yes. Yeah. So and that was and that was Brolin. And it looked a little Brolin-ish. So they did obviously did motion capture, but it's all CG. How about you, John? Oh, I'm I'm totally for a CG character at Darks. I don't think Dark Side can be. And, and I'll and I'll be honest. I I wish. Now, I haven't seen X Men Apocalypse yet, but previewing it, I wish they had gone with a CGI character for Apocalypse. Although I may feel very differently after I see the movie. For now, I really think uh, a, a CG dark side is the way to go to do the way the, to do him the way I think a lot of us are expecting right. him to be done. Mm -hmm. And as far as who to play him, I honestly think it's irrelevant who they get to play him if they do it CG and do it right. Just get the right voice for it, mm. and I think you'll be golden. Uh, how about you? Amy? How do they make Mark Ruffalo's Hulk? See, Whatever see, that way, uh, that's what that I way. want. Right <laughs> that's because it's got to me the perfect combination yeah. of a character who's physically impossible, but that has all the expressive power of a really talented actor. Like they, they nailed it. I, whatever yeah. that process was. Well, since Andy Serkis was Gollum, you know, in in, in Two Towers, yeah. I think they really did. And King Kong nail that man, King Kong. And by the way, and after you see, for anybody who might be guffawing at the idea of the lead character as a lead villain as a CJ, again, wait till you see Jungle Book and you <laughs> see yeah. what they can do with this you now. Will Believe because animals, look, all animals can talk. Yes, and then you'll look you'll at your animals it. at home and be like, why can't you do what they do? The, <laughs> you know, the little wolf puppy's like, mommy, is Mowgli safe? You're like, I want a little baby wolf that can talk. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. I think I think you're, you I'm with Amy. I'd like to see Dark Side as a, all CGI, but with a really great actor so they can capture the the you know. The emotion and Darkseid is not a one-dimensional character. He's a fully rounded three-dimensional character of evil. Yes. But you need to show that different those different sides of evil, albeit if it's in manipulation or if it's anger. So it's we need to get a really good actor. I would hope that they cast a great actor with a great voice who can then portray that the facial reactions of Darkseid. Good question. Evil Abraham Lincoln. Next up, we got Green Lantern 2814. Where are the other 2,800 of you? I don't know. But this is Green Lantern 2814 asks, thoughts on Tom Hardy starting or star, uh, starring in a new, new line cinema adaptation of 100 Bullets. So this was announced a couple months back that Tom Hardy has indeed uh, decided to, I don't know if he's playing Agent Graves or who he's playing in 100 Bullets, but it'll be a cinematic version. Uh, what are my thoughts of Tom Hardy starring in it? I'm all for it. I absolutely love the comic book series 100 Bullets. We featured it here as a spotlight years back before, or not years, now it's one year back, but it was in the early episodes of, uh, of Heroes where we're like, hey, this should be a movie or a, t or a TV show. So I'm very happy that someone has taken it up and making it into a movie. What are you guys' thoughts on Tom Hardy? Well, I have no idea who they'd have him play. Like he, it, Graves would be a weird fit, but I'm I'm sort of generically down for it. Like I yeah. assume they'll make a good decision because I, Tom Hardy would be a waste to. Like he's a good actor. It's a great story. 
I hope they can make this work. Part I, of me like, was like Lono. Remember that? The freakish mm. oh, kind of. I hate him so much. I know. Much. He's so evil. But <laughs> j- damn, that would be some bravery to go on that round. Ugh. What do you think, John? Uh, to me, Tom Hardy is becoming the new Guillermo del Toro in the sense that every other week there's a new project mm. he's announced it being attached to and half of them never come to be. Mm. So I just don't get myself all that invested in any Tom Hardy new projects until I hear they actually start shooting. I will agree with you. The only reason I'm, I'm invested is because I love 100 Bullets. Yep. I don't care about his other movies, but I agree with you. I love 100 Bullets. I don't care who he plays. I think it's a great idea, but are they going to make 100 movies then? Because don't they have Hell to? Hell no. <laughs> they are gonna, how I, do they do 100 they Bullets do, movie? Going to do it are they going to do the first 12 Bullets? I no, it was no, no. It's a TV announcement. It's, it's, no, a movie? it's a movie. Okay. And what they'll do, is my, my guess, is it'll be just the way they broke up the trades. Right. The trade paperbacks are individual storylines that those several bullets are used. Sure. You know, but you know, there it'll probably be like if they had their way, they would. Oh, we got six movies. You know, no, I'm if, worried they'll try to just compress the the general it'll be a bad, background story that eventually emerges. Bad into idea one. to no. compress. What a great HBO show that could be, though. Yeah. I, we'll see. We're not, now we live in the world of spoiled comic book people. That's where we are because we we, we are want spoiled. everything to be like Daredevil. Like we want a season. I, I like even even talking like you were talking about. Their, the Mar- Marvel movies do work as a cinematic television show. Yeah. Because they really are like, we only have to wait like six months between each one. That's because they can, they can put two years of effort into one episode. Yes, I agree. <laughs> but I'm just saying it's like, it's like movies, like doing these kind of movies, we want to know that they're not going to just try to crunch everything. That's why the Preacher announcement, I hated the idea of it being a movie. I was so glad when I heard that it wasn't happening because it needed to be a series. So thank God, Rogan and those other clowns who are also doing The Boys, which I don't have in here as an announcement, but they recently announced The Boys is wow, now going to be a series. Those guys are on a roll. So The Boys is a television series coming, I believe, to Cinemax. So it's going to have all that crazy, gratuitous sex and violence that you love from The Boys. If you haven't read The Boys, I don't know what's wrong with you. Get on it. But that's just a side note from that question. All right, next question comes. Daywalker asks, will there be a Collider Heroes special episode with the Russos? Well, yes, there will be. Me and John uh, interviewed them for our new Comic-Con HQ show, which you should all sign up for. You can find out about it by going online. There's a San Diego Comic-Con and Lionsgate have teamed up to make a brand S- brand new SVOD. You can get it right now and preview it for free for the next few months. We'll have a show on there. Um, and we interviewed the Russos. The, uh, we're also going to be doing, once Captain America Civil War comes out and all of us have seen it, we're going to do a spoiler-filled episode. Oh, yes. And it'll be, you know, however long it has to be, but it'll be uh, only watch it after you've seen the film. And we were able to ask the Russos some spoiler-filled questions, which they answered. So you that you won't see that until after you've seen the movie. So check it out when it comes online, probably May 8th, 9th, or 10th or something, maybe a week after the movie's been out. Craig asks, do you think that Christopher Reeve and Michael Keaton's Batman v Superman could have worked? What do you think? If they made a Batman versus Superman, but it was 1987 Superman for Christopher Reeve and 1989's Michael Keaton. Remember, those two movies yeah. came out just two years apart from each other. Hard to believe. It. Yeah. I, I, I just. World's I, finest. You can't see yeah, those two I guys. I just can't see it. It would be it's a weird fit. What I mean, I, w- I would have been excited to yeah. see it, but I, I just can't see how that what do you think? would work. I just can't see those guys fighting. No, no, no. So yeah, no, world's no. finest, yes. Batman v Superman, no. Well, but yeah, I'm, I mean, a world's finest movie, sure. Yeah, I, I think you could absolutely see something like that. But Batman v Superman, I couldn't see that at all. I agree, hundred. I mean, it would be really, and I would really like it if Metropolis and Gotham City were not next to each other. You mean right across the lake? No, yeah, I mean Gotham, kind of Chicago. Silly. Yeah, it was all supposed to be New York, but with a pantheon of villains, it's the Chicago mob mentality. Right. That's what I mean. I, I, but I, I just the tone of those movies is so different. That I can't see them in the same place at the same time. I think it would have been interesting, but it, but it would for me have to be more the like the Justice League World's Finest version of it, and yeah. less the like Batman v Superman. That, that would be definitely. more intriguing. Yeah, I would. I definitely am down with seeing the world of the brighter Superman meets the gothic Batman, and having them become pals, not even really having to fight each other. Whatever that you know. So Batman versus Superman or Batman v Superman, I'd just say, why didn't we get somebody out there with CG talent? Please make a Michael Keaton and and Christopher Reeve team up movie called. Called world's finest and we'll uh, we'll t- tell everyone where you put it on youtube um next we've got andy perkins do you think we will see any other justice league characters besides batman in suicide squad you think anybody else is going to pop up we've heard them mention mm. superman several times in the trailers especially in this new trailer they mentioned him almost in past tense so what are your thoughts do you think anyone else is going to show I up i think i heard them i think i remember hearing henry cavill at one point specifically say he's not in okay so, so no i think batman will probably be it 
How about you? I can't imagine that they would. How many characters are that movie already? Right. I would say more likely is vice versa. If Suicide Squad does well enough, we'll get a little Amanda Waller cameo in Justice League. Nice. Right. I like um, that answer. That but, sounds like the mo that makes the most sense. Coming down, it's the sweaty question of the week, and that is Dan Danny Sanchez asks, who would you cast as Modoc in the MCU? I'd personally cast Steve Buscemi or Matt Smith on a Netflix series. So that's Danny's choice. I'm going to go with the easiest one. Just get it out of the way. Peter Dinklage as Modoc. All of us probably would say, all right, let's get on that. <laughs> Dinklage, sign that. I know Kevin Feige's already got you as Modoc. Let's just make it happen. What do you think, Amy? Who could play Modoc? Oh, shoot. Uh, somebody unexpected that like hasn't had a chance to sort of be really menacing. I'd love to pull like some cool middle-aged character actor from a law Megan and Fox. order or something like that. Well, maybe not that unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> Although if she's down, um, I know that would be terrible. Uh, <laughs> some, some like middle-aged character actor from, from a law and order or from a CSI spinoff or something that hasn't ever had a chance to like strut their stuff, mm. I think would be a lot of fun. Not a, well, who's the guy from NYPD, uh, uh, who was it, Maroney, the guy from Man of Steel. Oh. Christopher Maloney. Christopher yeah. Maloney, right. He would be cool, but then there's the guy who's like, looks a lot like him a little bit and always gets mistaken for him, Elias Cotius. Now, I would like to see Elias Cotius play Modoc. How about you, John? Uh, I'm going to go Danny DeVito, and not because he's <laughs> this short guy, but if you've seen him play Villainous and the the... the the texture in his voice mm. and all that kind of stuff. I actually think Danny DeVito would rock it as Modoc. I would love to see Danny DeVito yeah. as Modoc. How about you, Robert? Well, I'm going to do, you know how John Reese Davies is like a huge 6'2 guy, but he plays Gimli the Dwarf. Oh, my yes. God. Lord of the Rings great. movies. He's so good. I want no. I want well, Ron Perlman. Ooh. We oh. reduce Ron Perlman as, you know, do the, the squeeze his face down. Squeeze yeah. his face down. Either that or Brian Cranston. I like it. Playing Modoc, but shrinking him. I, all these people that we just mentioned, someone on there with Photoshop skills, put all of them in a Modoc vice grip. And I want to <laughs> see that online sometime. You have been watching episode 53 of Collider Heroes. Thanks for hanging out. Let me thank my panelists, Robert Meyer Burnett. Where can people find you online? As always, you can find me on Instagram at uh, RM Burnett, or you can find me on Twitter at Burnett RM, or on Facebook, Robert Meyer Burnett. John Campia, where can people find you online? You can find me on Facebook and on tw Twitter, simply at John Campia. Subscribe to my podcast, The John Campia Podcast. And once again, head on over to comic-conhq.com. Sign up for your free trial of the new Comic-Con HQ channel, where uh, John Schnepp and I have a show premiering in May. So go and do that right now. And Amy Dallin, where can people find you online? You can find me on Twitter at EnthusiAmy, most other services as well, uh, youtube.com slash Amy Dallin, where I have a show called Future Girl. And you can find me on Geek and Sundry on Drama Club Heroes, where we read unmade superhero film scripts, which has been such an education. Awesome. Uh, I'm John Schnepp. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. Check out my Kickstarter. It's in its last week. Sweaties Unite, Rise of the Uber Nerd. It's all about comic book stores and uniting fans of comic book stores across the world. Comic book movies and television shows, a lot of people are into them. I want to see comic book stores survive through the next two decades, not just this decade. So check it out. Donate if you can. We'll be back here next week with Collider Heroes number 54. Take care. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.